The house had a very strong architectural flavor. Built in 1973, open spaces, big entertainment spaces, the openness of it was very, very appealing to me. I had a very clear, almost immediate vision of what I wanted the ultimate field to be. I had to respect the architectural boundaries that I was working within, but I needed to bring my antiquities, so to speak, my elements of history to really make it mine. I've always been a visual person. I would not say that I've always known that I wanted to do this kind of work, but I think I've been blessed or cursed with what one might call a greedy eye. If I don't always have something new to look at, I become a little grumpy. So I'm always looking at things, whether it's ugly, worn out, distasteful, spectacular, it's always feeding my emotion. So when I'm doing design work for my clients, using my eyes and my vision and my mental repository of things that I've looked at always guides me. My favorite space to relax in is probably the living room because there's a comfortable couch, it's not a structured environment, there's free floating furniture that almost borders on art pieces, and then the fireplace. One of the reasons why I bought the home in the first place was that it had a working wood burning fireplace and it became the starting point for the rest of the house. So there's a lot of natural elements in here, elements that speak to a rural as opposed to an urban setting. And then the house demanded what other pieces I should bring to it, which were a little more modern, a little more urban. So it's quite a blend of both scenarios. On my trips overseas for work, I had seen a trend that had emerged in Paris, and that was sort of mosaics, bohemian qualities to hard surfaces, in particular tiles. And Patricia Yerkolia designed this tile background that was a complexity of different colors and elements together. And Stone Tile had this tile on display, and I fell in love with it. When I thought of my design for the kitchen, I knew immediately that was the tile I was going to use. A lot of the pieces were basically thieved from my store. <laughs> so it became a new show space, so to speak, for pieces that I love. Something I'll always make room for in my home, wherever I am, is likely my collection of books. They're historical, they represent a life in transition, so they change as you change and you have an intimate relationship with them. My personal point of view on design begins with the architecture because that's the envelope that you're working within. So ultimately you have to respect that. And the hardest part was the compromise I had to make in terms of space. So although the living room, the lower lounge, the kitchen all integrate in a very sort of illuminating way, I did have to compromise on my space in my master bedroom and my ensuite. The master bedroom is not overly large and neither was the ensuite. And because of the multi-levels in the house, I couldn't get space from anywhere else. So I adopted sort of a theme that I had seen in higher end hotels, which was integrating the ensuite with the master bedroom. I cheated and I took out a wall and I made it part of the closet space and I daringly stepped the bathroom inside the master bedroom and it worked. I'm always changing things and my personal spaces are never done. <laughs> I sort of feel that you create a little more energy when you move objects or artwork around and I like to do that, it's fun. It keeps things fresh. If I could describe my home in one word, what would that be? Wow. Um, could I say multicultural? I would say that because, number one, it spans time boundaries, and number two, because there's elements in here from all over the world, I think it's a happy blend, and I would call it multicultural. Multicultural.